<laughs> you shut up. <laughs> We take this personally, by the way, so everybody who we'll said leave, leave your address so we can uh, TP your house. Uh, I think you got your cousins calling me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I think we ought to continue uh, with our um, uh, dialogue about the uh, sports events. But before we're doing that, I just want to tell the audience what we are doing as far as, um, you know, hearing the audience's pain, um, you know, FlintTalkRadio.com and certainly the uh, program of what's going on try to um, situate itself into what is going on in the community. And we are very much aware of the fact that during the summer months, people are traveling and they're busy. They're doing all kinds of things around the house and things of that sort. So to accommodate those busy schedules that we have in the summer, we're doing a whole host of things because the weather is good and we are doing things we're not doing in the um, winter months when we are more or less locked inside our homes, <clears throat> uh, weather and things like that. We wanted to accommodate your busy schedule. So we are shortening in, uh, shortening in our programs up during the uh, month of July all the way through the last part of uh, August. And so um, on this 20th of uh, July, we are going to have a shorter version of our normal program, which airs from 1.30 to 2.30. We're going to get back to that schedule on the 23rd of August. But right now we are shortening in our, our program so as to accommodate your business and uh, trying to make sure that you're able to stay tuned for a shorter version of the program called What's Going On. Uh, Catherine, why don't we, um, we talked a little bit last week about um, some of the baseball icons. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I just love uh, you bringing in uh, Satchel Page and uh, get a chance to talk about Josh Gibson. Uh, I mentioned uh, the gentleman named Grant. And John Henry Pop Lloyd. John Henry Pop Lloyd. And those uh, players who were, you know, pioneers. They didn't, uh, some of them didn't get a, didn't get a chance to play in the major leagues, but they're playing off the field of the major leagues was a pioneering role. They played unsung. You know, you have this program called Unsung that comes on mm-hmm. uh, um, Channel 57, I think you told me. TV1. Uh, TV1 and 157 on, on my uh, network. Uh, I have um, another um, source. But, um, you know, those are un- they are unsung because we don't remember too much about them. So they're unsung uh, heroes and sheroes. And uh, those those baseball players are unsung, but what they did off the major league uh, ball fields was important for those who eventually had a chance to star in the uh, major leagues because of what was really the pioneering role they played. They never mm-hmm. get they never get the credit they they they, they deserve. It's due to them, but um, that's that's very important. You you brought something today that I thought was very uh, good. Also, um, you know we have these uh, Kentucky Derbies and all these different. Um, uh, races, the Belmont, and things of that sort. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was very good for you to bring in, given the fact we have all these sporting events going on in the summertime, something about the um, uh, the early races uh, and that. Why don't you share some of that yeah. with, with the audience? Early history of it. Okay. Now, John, this is the way I teach. I can do it from a book. I don't have George's ability to pull those things from when this happened and the pages on the book. I don't have that ability at this point in time. I teach from a book, okay? <laughs> and and so. if, I can, if I can teach from the book, I'm going to uh, ask the dean to raise my salary. <laughs> that's, a, that's a skill right there. <laughs> oh, okay. Black jockeys who won the Kentucky Derby. Mm. And since I, you know, I love uh, going to the horse races, I don't care if it's trotters, if it's runners, I just love horse Is that races. Right? Is that right? Yes, I do. I was good at it. Uh-huh. Uh, you ever been to the K- Kentucky Derby? Yes. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've taken my children. And uh, I would give them money. We would go up into the clubhouse or whatever whenever I had my children. Uh-huh. Go up in the clubhouse, feed them and everything, give them money to gamble. Well, the baby girl was a very, very lucky, mm-hmm. very blessed child. And I thought she was going to be a straight-up gambler. And she did for a minute, uh-huh. but she cooled on out. Is that <laughs> so, right? so, you, so you would go down to Kentucky? Kentucky and around Flint and, and Detroit uh-huh. and Canada, yeah. You, now, you ever Saginaw. Hazleton, the Hazleton Park, when they had the... Uh, they would have them riding on the little. You talking about in Detroit? In Detroit. Yeah. Is that Those right? are trotters. I didn't, yeah, yeah, trotters. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know you were uh, a horse racing fan. You never said that before. Oh, well, 
I, I, I never asked her. That's why you Thank know. you. Okay. A lot well, of facts is to I, me. I, I, learned, I learned something every time we had the program. <laughs> That's why I do this program, because I know I'm going to learn something about Catherine. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing her. I the, love horse racing. I'm, I'm writing yes, her I biography, do. and I'm just taking these notes down, so I have some reference points. Well, thank you, George. I, well, you, you deserve it. Yeah. Uh, read what you have there. I'd like to know some, okay. some about this. Okay. Uh, On July 10th, 1891, and at Washington Park Racetrack in Chicago, a black jockey named Monk Overton won six straight races. 16 years later in 1907, the feat was repeated by another jockey named Jimmy Lee. Mm. This is according to the New York Times. The riding of Jimmy Lee, a colored jockey, was the feature of Churchill Downs this afternoon. Mm. He won all six races on the card, and some of the mounts were at long prices. Mm -hmm. That means it was some big money. One dollar parlayed on Lee's Mount would have netted fifteen thousand dollars. Man, this record has been equal but twice by Fred Archer and George Fordham in England. Monk Overton, another Negro, one day at Washington Park in Chicago, sixteen years ago, won the first six races. When Lee rode back to the stand after winning the last race, he was cheered by the crowd. In the race on Foreigner, in the race on Foreigner. He lowered the track record for a mile and three furloughs by nearly two seconds. Wow. <clears throat> you know, that, that's, that's so interesting. Um, those, I think I read somewhere where those uh, early uh, jockeys were black jockeys, that they yeah. were the ones who rode those horses. Mm -hmm. And it was considered to be, I guess it was something like uh, the caddies are in that time period. We don't see any, hardly any black caddies right now. Uh, the U.S. Open, I don't think for the saw. golf, yeah, for the golf. Mm -hmm. But at one time, those persons were carrying those bags, and also advising, because you know those guys. If you watch those caddies, they are also experts. They're telling the uh, golfers, you know, they're talking to them about what club you think they ought to use. I mean, they're experts in their own right. They just don't have the clubs in their hand, mm -hmm. and that role was played by those uh, those blacks carrying those clubs back yeah, in the day. It's uh, on uh, 57, 50, uh, Channel Fifty Seven, also about unfair. Uh, Fairways, mm -hmm. and it's narrated by um, was it Samuel Jackson? Really about golf. It's uh -huh. very very interesting because they like they were caddies, but those guys was really playing and they played games and they would win and they had fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of consultation that goes on. So now, do they have a year for that? Because I'm I'm interested in what time period we're talking uh, about. This the well, the one at Washington Park was July 10th, 1891. Okay. But I also want to say Isaac Murphy was the first jockey to win three Kentucky Derbies. Wow. You know, at first it was only blacks was riding. Uh, Isaac Murphy. Uh, yeah, Isaac Murphy. Okay. Were the only riders, the only jockeys that were riding the horses, mm -hmm. and then. Whites came in there later because they were big purses, as I know, as has said about one dollar plier laid on Lee Mount. Mounts would have netted fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So these black jockeys was making big monies also at that time. Mm -hmm. Then they got eased out. You yeah. don't see too many black jockeys today. Mm, I don't see any. Um, now uh, this one jockey just had they had that won the Kentucky Derby with man that man that bird. So I do keep up with the. Uh, Horse racing, although I don't go to it because I'm not too much on losing my money. <laughs> I'm too cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have to tell you something. You were talking about you went that. The reason I asked you about Hazleton uh, Park, where they have the, uh, you said it's the Trotters. Yeah. So I didn't know what I was watching. Well, Swartz Creek has it here, right here in they Flint. Here. So I could have saved some well, gas money. They call it Flint, but it's Swartz Creek. I, I went down to Hazleton uh, Park and was watching the Trotters. And uh, then my friend said, let's go down to the, uh, this, this racetrack. So he, he's a big, you know, gambler. And uh, that, I don't mean a big game, but he likes to throw money out there. So I was, uh, I never bet uh, to win. I was betting to place because if you, if you place, you may get you know, a couple of dollars and some change. So anytime I would uh, bet the place, I would uh, win a dollar here, a dollar there. So I'm back at the hot dog stand. <laughs> the guy said, I'm not coming with you anymore. You don't like the gamble. Cause I'm too I'm, cheap. I'm too cheap to do that. You but, gotta um, play some money. But it's kind of, I have to say it was kind of. I went. I went there twice. It was kind of exciting. It is exciting, especially when they go around and they come back around and they are coming down mm -hmm. to the, to the final line. Yeah. Oh, that's but, the excitement. But, 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 but I can't. I can't get into and, the Belmont. I mean, it's like a minute. What is it like? Two minutes of running, and then what do you do after the after the two minutes is up? You pick up your money. Pick up. <laughs> Pick up your yeah, money. Go ahead and cash in. So, uh, yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to get personal here. Uh, uh, listen, audience, this is, uh, is going to be a scoop. Uh, only on FlintTalkRadio.com. What's the largest amount of money that you, uh, that you won? 1200 
I'm going to start gambling. <laughs> I mean, it was just, that was it. That was the largest I have ever won. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I would never win anything. In fact, when, um, my wife uh, does the lottery. I just don't play it because my luck is not, uh, you know, I think I was born, I'm, I was born April 13th. I think that's on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, uh, the 13th is a lucky day. It is? Yes, it is. You had to go with the Jesus and the disciples. It was 12, and he made the 13th, 13th one. So that's a lucky They just... Somehow those idioms got in that Friday the 13th is a bad luck day, but it's not. Okay. It's because the Knights Templars are rounded up on uh, February, not February, it's like um, Friday the 13th. The Knights Templars, the Order Knights Templars. Okay, oh. and any oh. 13 the of them? Uh, no, the no, this was what happened on the 13th. and there, No, there are, there are actually thousands of those. Oh, okay. okay. Hundreds so. maybe at least, yeah. I'm talking about in the beginning when they started. Well, well I'm glad to know I that. Don't, I don't know what the strength was. They, um, they was. they was quite high, the Knights Templars. Where they had, like, they, they had, you know, Strongholds and throughout Europe and the Holy Land. So. Well, I'm glad you said that because I thought the 13 was unlucky because of the day. No, you had, it's all how you look at it. it. You know, I head. always say, oh, it's a good day today. <laughs> you know, but uh, 1,200 was my largest amount that I ever won. Wow. But if I was winning 100, I mean, you just play a dollar uh -huh. and you win 100. So I was just happy and excited with so, that. So the, the people that go to the Belmont, I mean, I, I've never been there, so let me just see if I can learn something. So they go to the Belmont, the race lasts about uh, a, a maximum of two minutes and something. Mm -hmm. So then after the two minutes and plus the race is over, then they go collect their money, then they leave? No, no, what, what no, is, no, what? no. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm a type of gambler like this. I would take uh, some of this money and put it up, and then some I would gamble back. I never would give it all back. But uh, they just have one race, don't they? Is it just one? No, it's several races oh, it's several they races. have, yeah. So maybe up to 12 races. Really? Yeah. So uh, they have. So the big race would be the one that we see, like Man That Bird won. Well, the Kentucky Derby is a big race. It's a big race. But here at, in Flint, Swartz Creek, it's oh, it's okay. just several. Yeah. Races. Yeah, you know? I know they would have more than one at those events. I was just saying at the, like the Belmont when they have the big race. It's a big it's race. It's just one, right? It's one, one big race. one, the big pot. The big. But the more money you put down on it, you know, first, uh, second place, and whatever they call it, and win, the more you win. And me, I was cheap like you, George. Plus, I had them bringing my children, and I had to give them money to gamble and feed them and everything. So mm -hmm. I would, you know, be a dollar bets, two dollars. The most I would do is five. You know, what was the cost of getting? What, what would it cost? What, what was the cost of getting in when you were going there to the Belmont? I've never been or, to Belmont or to the Kentucky Derby. I don't know because it was so long ago. Was it quite a quite? A, was it like? Uh, uh because I would take my children. Okay. We would go down and, and and stay in a resort and. and well, back in those days, I guess I could afford it. I don't really don't know how much well, you know it what? Cost. If, if I if I pay if I go to the uh, Kentucky Derby, and you are going to race for two minutes, and then it's, it's over. Uh, particularly if I didn't win, I got to see some some replays. <laughs> but the fun of it is, is betting your money, waiting for the horses to run around. And I, what I like about the Kentucky Derby is they're runners. I love runners better than I do trotters. Uh -huh. Trotters is okay, but the runners, uh -huh. yeah, they going. Dog races too. Yeah, down in Memphis. Oh you know, yes, the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds. In yes, yes, yes. That yeah. was big fun. I'm missing all all this fun here. I'm th here. I am uh, stuck in baseball, football, and basketball. But I never I'm took off how much it cost or anything. You just just do go it. right. Yeah, it's all in a package deal. Some of my friends are telling me we got some some bargains down here. The Pistons are playing, and it only costs two hundred dollars a seat. They're gonna give us this 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 choice area. I'm saying for two hundred dollars a seat, I can sit in a choice area. It's called my living room. <laughs> See, but George is cheap. I, I, he is cheap, I, John. I'll be the first one to tell you. He, he's cheap. You know, I, I, I wouldn't pay. I want to see. I pay twenty dollars to see the World Series. I mean, that's why I. I've been sitting there, man. I, too. See, none it, of that stuff is. If, if it, I pay, it, it's just enough for me. Interesting enough for me to pay that kind of money. You know what? If I paid a hundred dollars to see a game, I'd be. I couldn't watch the game. I'd be too mad. <laughs> 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 I was up there with steam coming out my eyes. I can't even watch the basketball because I, all my money's gone. I'm trying to think about where's where my hot dogs gonna come from. I mean, I'm going to spend so much money. I, I, you know mm -hmm. what? What I, what I did, I put when I went to Hazelton uh, Park, I put ten dollars in my in my pocket. Okay, I said this is my this is my this is my money to get in. It's like four dollars to get in. Here's my money to get in. Here's my uh, popcorn money. Here's my hot dog money and my gambling money. You didn't go to the clubhouse and eat dinner, huh? No, I no. Are you kidding? Oh, you gotta go do that. So I, I so I, I once I, whenever I place. I take I wouldn't go in the pocket. I would go up there and get a hot dog, and I'm sitting there eating a hot dog, and I'm. Uh, placing every time I won uh, a couple of dollars here and there, I'm just trying to you know break even. And um, once I did that, I was happy. I came back with a smile on my face and 
went back the second time. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like at the casinos when you pull that slot and all those tingling and, 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 and you be winning. I love it. Uh, are you are you able to control? You know, some people it's like an addiction. You know, where they oh, I can control mine. I, I've never gotten addicted to none of it. It's all right. You, so you got no. control. Well, you you that's the kind of person that should go to the racetrack. But when I hear people like Barkley uh, saying that he was uh, he had lost ten million ten million dollars. You know, at the uh, in in Las Vegas, you know, something uh, ten million dollars losing that. I'm ready to uh, take the whip out and just and just tell you to get up there and give me let me give you a couple on your back. Mm. That, that's that I can't un- even understand that mindset. Let me mention this book. This all this information that I've been giving to you uh, for the last three weeks is uh-huh. from the Black Book, okay, which is written by uh, Bill Cosby. Really? Yeah. Is it? This is it Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Yep. I have that. I never noticed. Uh, Middleton Harrison with the assistance of Morris Livet. Okay. Roger Furman and Ernest uh, Smith. But uh, Bill Cosby is in here. I think okay. he might have did. Oh, he did the introduction. Okay. But it's a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of great stuff in that book then. I think the book is hard to get right now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, that that's important uh, information. I love, I love to talk about the early time period in these sporting events. We take a lot of things for granted right now and fail to mm-hmm. understand that there was – uh, a price that was paid by pioneers who weren't able themselves to get on the field or, in this case, get on the horse's back. And uh, 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 well, they're doing it in this case. Or they were, took, took it from them. Took it from them and all yeah. that. But uh, we, are, we were in full force in the horse racing. It's interesting that that would be the case there when there was denial in the American sports. You know, baseball was American mm-hmm. pastime. But uh, it's interesting how democratic this, this was in terms of the uh, horse racing. Well, I'm always interested in learning, uh, Catherine. I'm writing down these notes, as I said, trying to make sure my notes are together when I write this biography of Catherine. You're going to be reading about it uh, in the uh, not-too-distant future. I'm going to write that, too. Okay. Okay. uh, As we said, we are doing an abbreviated version of our program during the summer uh, months up until August 23rd. And we brought you today, um, uh, for the past um, couple of weeks, we have uh, brought you some of the uh, news about uh, and history about um, sporting events and uh, such a page uh, two weeks ago and then uh, this uh, event today with the uh, horse racing. Not very well known about those uh, jockeys. jockeys and, uh, that, so this is before. There's quite a few of them. Shoemaker and uh, those, uh, those, uh, those artists. You know, riding a horse, I think, would be really, that is a sport because you have to <laughs> lean down and, you know, let the wind the friction of, of running fast and wind blowing. And the less so weight, the, the better down. jockey you are. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and, some riders, and the riders make, make a difference. Okay, uh, let's um, get together there next week. We are g- going to continue this abbreviated version of the program, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again the same time next week for about a 15 to 20-minute um, version of the program called What's Going On. Until that time, stay tuned to all the programs on flinttalkradio.com. Certainly pay attention to our program called What's Going On. Uh, until that time, uh, don't forget to follow your dreams because if you don't follow your dreams, you will never know what's on the other side of the rainbow. You gotta have a dream.